All right, now in the last lesson, we created a brand new material app, which is going to be the basis for all the other widgets that we're gonna construct on screen. And by including the material app, we also get to tap into all of the components or widgets that the material apps come with, such as a text or an image widget. But in this lesson, we're gonna look at creating a scaffold in this material app so that we can have an app bar, we can have a body where most of our app is gonna go, or we can have a floating button if we wanted to. And the scaffold widget is pretty much exactly that. You can use it to place common items onto your screen. I recommend reading the scaffold class documentation and seeing what it allows you to do. So inside our app, instead of having a centered piece of text, we're gonna go ahead and delete all of that. So select everything up to the closing comment for the center widget, and you can go ahead and delete that. Now notice that these comments get created automatically. And it shows you, for example, this is the end of the center widget. This is the end of the material app widget. And if I added a comma here and hit save, it separates out the text widget and shows me that this is the final closing brace. And this makes it easy for us to be able to, for example, take this part out, which is the text widget, or take this part out, which is the center widget, just to be able to see where that's coming from. Now, if it bothers you having a lot of this extra stuff that gets written on screen, making your code look more wordy, you can also go into the preferences and go into the editor section, then general, then appearance, and you can either enable or disable this if you want. I'm gonna leave it in just to make it easier for you to see where each part ends, but it's again up to you as a personal preference. So we were gonna go and delete the center widget from here. So we're gonna leave the part where it says home, but we're gonna delete the center widget. What should we set as the home of our material app? Well, it's going to be a scaffold widget. And our scaffold widget, you can see, can have a lot of different properties or different things that you can set. And that includes adding in a floating action button or changing what's inside the body of the app, adding in an app bar and a whole bunch of other things that you can do. In our case, we're going to firstly add a comma at the end of every new parentheses we create. And inside the parentheses for our scaffold, we're going to add an app bar. By writing the words app bar, we're setting one of the properties of our scaffold. We're telling it that in the position where it expects to have an app bar, we're going to put an app bar widget there. Now an app bar widget is simply a bit of pre-built material design and it adds a top app bar to your app. And if we take a look at the app bar class, it tells us there's all sorts of things that you can change about the app bar. For example, it could have a title or it could have a button on the left, or it could have multiple buttons on the right, or it could have a bottom or a flexible space. So we're not gonna make our app bar that complicated. And it also has a whole bunch of properties that you can change, such as its background color or its brightness. Let's go ahead and first add a title to our app bar. So we're gonna tap into the title property and we're gonna give it a title. And our title is gonna be made up of a text widget. And we're simply gonna write the title for our app, which is, I am rich. So now let's go ahead and run our app. And you can see we have something that looks a little bit more like a real app now. It's got a real app bar. It's got a title for the app bar. And it's got a body that's kind of just blank at the moment. On the top right corner, you see this little banner here and it says debug. It's basically telling you that whatever is running at the moment is not the final version of the app. And when you finally build your app and run it on a real device, then that little banner will go away. But when it's in the debug mode, it's there to tell you that this is not the fastest version of the app. It might have a few lags. It's not optimized. It's just for development and debugging. Now, if that little banner bothers you, a really quick way of getting rid of it is by going into the Flutter Inspector while your app is running 
and going into the more actions button and you can click on hide debug mode banner and it will just make that disappear for you like some sort of mafia boss. Now that we've got our app bar and in the docs, you can see that the app bar has a whole bunch of things that we can change about it. For example, it's title and we did in fact give it a title. You can also add buttons to it, but you can also scroll down to see all of the possible properties that you can change. And one of the ones that I'm quite keen on changing is the background color of my app bar. I don't really want it to be blue. I kind of want it to be a fancier blue. <laughs> and very often your client will say things like, that color doesn't feel classy enough. Give me a classy color. So let's give them a classy color. So in order to change the background color of our app bar, we can take a look at its properties. And one of those properties looks suspiciously like it's going to do exactly what it is that we want. And we can read the description where it says, this is the color that's going to be used for the app bar's material. So that seems pretty much like what we need to change the background color, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Now for the app bar, you can see at the moment, it's got one property set, which is the title property. And the title property expects a widget some sort of widget that will be displayed in that position of the title in the app bar. But the property that we want to add is called background color. And this particular property expects something that is a color. So how can we put a color in here? Well, when you're creating a material app, as I mentioned, you get access to a whole bunch of material widgets, but you also get access to all of the material colors. So when Google came up with the material design system, they also came up with a color palette for you to use. And if you take a look at this page, you can see all of the material colors and they have different shades, darker or lighter or accent tones that look just a little bit brighter and a little bit more catchy. And you have access to all of these colors straight away by making your app a material app. If you want to go and change the color, you can tap into colors and this will tap into all of the material colors. And then you add a dot and you get to choose which color you want. So in our case, I'm going to make the app bar a blue gray color. And this looks kind of like this. And I want it to be a kind of dark shade of blue gray. So I quite fancy this blue gray 900. So that's what I'm going to type in here. I'm going to type blue gray and then inside some square brackets, I'm going to write 900. So now if I run my app again, you'll notice that the background of the app bar changes to a dark blue color and it looks a lot classier. I hope you might agree. Now, We've got our app bar and it's looking pretty nice. The next thing to change is the main body of our app. Going back to our scaffold class, you can see that the app bar is one of the things that we can change about it, but it's also got the body, which is the primary content of the scaffold. It's everything that's going to go in here pretty much. Let's go ahead and provide a widget for it so that we can actually show something there. Now, inside our scaffold, we have a single property that we've set, which is the app bar. And for the app bar position of our scaffold, we've created an actual app bar widget. Inside that widget, we've changed two of its properties. One, we've given it a title to say, I am rich as a piece of text widget. And we've also set the background color of our app bar widget to a dark blue gray color. What if I wanted to change the entire background of my scaffold so that this is no longer white, but a nice sort of standard blue gray color? How can I do that? So as a challenge, I want you to look through the documentation of the scaffold widget and see if you can figure out how to change the background color of our scaffold. Pause the video and try to complete this challenge. All right, so let's first try and find the scaffold class in the documentation. 
and we can read a little bit about what it does. But more importantly, if we scroll down, we can see that there's a whole bunch of properties or things that we can change and customize for our particular scaffold. Now we've already added an app bar, but we now want a background color. So this is gonna change the entire scaffold's background color. And we can do that by simply adding it as another property that we set. If we collapse the app bar part, you can see that in our scaffold widget, we've set a single property called app bar. But what if we wanted to add another property? Let's add the background color property in here. And we can provide a color using colors dot blue gray. And now if I hit run, you can see that the entirety of my background has turned into this blue gray color because I've changed that property called background color for my scaffold widget. It's through the use of different widgets, different types of widgets, such as layout widgets or components such as app bars. And then by setting the properties for each of these widgets that we start to customize the appearance and the functionality of our apps. Now, all we need is to actually have some content in our app, right? There's currently nothing in our app other than an app bar and a blank background. If we look at the scaffold class again, you can see that in the example code, the example shows a scaffold with an app bar, bottom app bar, and a floating action button. And then it talks about the body. Now the body is where the primary content of the scaffold is gonna go. And that refers to this area right here. And you can see that when you set the body property, it's expecting a widget to be set there. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's firstly add a property, that's the body property, and we're gonna provide a widget right here. The widget that I'm gonna use is going to be an image widget, and you can create it by writing the word image and a set of parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we get to define what type of image we're going to show. So for the body of my scaffold, I'm going to add a image widget. And the image widget is almost like a picture frame. You create it and it starts out blank, but you can change one of its properties. Now, when we search for the documentation for the image class, for example, if I type it in here, you'll notice that there's actually two different images that we could be tapping into. One is an image from Dart, and another is an image from widgets. Now, because we want an actual image widget, because it will show up on screen, then we wanna look at the documentation for that particular selection. So this is just a tip to remember that when you're searching in the search box for the documentation, there might be multiple things that are named the same, but they come from different libraries of code. And if you're putting something on screen that's gonna show up, it's always going to be a widget. In our image class, you can see that there's a whole bunch of different ways of creating a new image. And we can either create an image from our asset bundle, or we can create an image from a file, or we can create an image from the network. So the image class is actually just a placeholder. It's like a picture frame that we put onto the screen and it doesn't come with an image by default. Instead, we have to use one of its properties. For example, the image property to tell it what image it should display. Here is our image widget and we're going to set its image property. Now there's different types of images that we can display. We can either display an asset image, that's an image that comes from our project folders, or we can display a network image that comes from the internet. So let's try this one first. You can see that this particular widget expects a URL, and this has to be a URL that corresponds to an image so that it will show up inside our image picture frame. If we go onto Google and we just search for, I don't know, image, we go into images, then let's pick one of these images. Let's say this one, some Northern Lights 
to go into our app. If we right click on the image and we say open image in new tab, then it will open it with the URL that we need to fetch this particular image. Notice that there's nothing else on screen. This is just where the image resides. So let's copy that URL and paste it inside here. In order to use text, not code, but actual strings, we have to add some single quotes around the text. So we will paste our URL inside two single quotes. And while in other programming languages, such as Swift or Java, we'll be using double quotes, when we're writing dark code by convention, we should work always with single quotes at the end and at the beginning. Now we're telling our app that it should display an image in the main body of our scaffold. And the image that it should display is going to be one that's fetched from the internet. And the place where that image resides is right here. So now if we hit play, and we run our app, then you can see it shows up our image right in there in the body of our app. Here's a challenge. At the moment, our image is right at the top of our app. Can you make it such that the image is centered inside the body of our scaffold? You've seen this before. Pause the video and try to complete this challenge. As we saw before, if we want to center a widget inside another widget, we can use the center widget. And in order to do that, we would have to wrap the image widget inside a center widget. Now we can either do that by what we did before, which is where we cut out that widget, put in the center widget, and then inside the center widget, we told it what's going to be the child or the thing that's going to be centered, and then we pasted in the thing that needed to be in the center. Now, there's a much easier way that I want to show you. I've reverted the code back to what we had before. And if you click on the widget that you want to embed in another widget, and you either click on the little yellow light bulb that shows up, or hold down Alt on Windows or Option on Mac, and hit Enter, you'll see a little menu pop up. And this little menu makes it really convenient for you to embed the current thing that's selected inside something else. So we can wrap it with a column, wrap it with a row, put it in a new container, and also put it in a center widget. And that automatically puts in the center widget, adds in a child property, and puts our previous widget that we had selected inside there. So now when we run our app again, you'll see that our image gets automatically centered in the body of our scaffold, which is exactly what we told it to do. So we now have a really simple app that's written with very few lines of code, but it actually does quite a lot of powerful stuff. It's laid out and created a new app structure for us using the scaffold. We provided an app bar and set the background color of our app bar to a color that comes from the material palette, which is this dark blue gray color. We gave it a title using a text widget, and then we added a body property to our scaffold to tell it what it should display in the main body of the app. And here we have an image that's fetched from the internet using a URL where that image lives. And then we centered that widget using our convenient menu. And we now have an app that does pretty complicated things, especially for how few lines of code we've written. So it's a good time to review the structure of our current app. And I'm gonna go onto a website called draw.io, which makes it really easy to create flowcharts and diagrams. And I'm gonna create a diagram for my I am rich app. Let's start from the beginning. We have a material app right at the top of the tree. So let's drag in a rounded rectangle and let's call it material app. Now that material app has a single item that's embedded inside it and that's a scaffold. So let's add that as a descendant 
and that's going to be our scaffold. And inside the scaffold, we've got a couple of things. We've got a app bar, we've got a body, and we've got a background color. So the background color is a color widget. Let's add that here. We've got a color widget and we've got an app bar widget. And finally, we've got a center widget. These are the three children or descendants of our scaffold. And then these widgets each have their own children. So the center widget has an image as a child. So let's add that. And remember we said that the image widget is kind of just like a picture frame and it has to have some content for it to actually display something. So the image widget actually has a child that is a network image because it has to fetch the image from the internet. And the app bar has two children, a title, that's a text widget, and a background color, that's another color widget. So let's add that in there as well. So we've got a text widget and a color widget. And this is our widget tree. By embedding widgets inside other widgets and setting the properties of each of these widgets, we've ended up creating an app that actually looks like it's almost ready for the app store. There's certainly a lot simpler apps that I've seen. And all that we've written is just 22 lines of code. But we've effectively created an iOS app and an Android app that has an image, that has an app bar, that has backgrounds, that has a whole lot of things, all because we're leveraging the power of these pre-built widgets from Flutter. And in the next lesson, we're going to learn about another type of widget that will allow us to load images from our assets folder in our project and display it inside our app. So for all of that and more, I'll see you on the next lesson.